I bet a lot of you uh, complained about how hot it was today, didn't you? It was pretty hot out. Well, in 2005, my partner Chris and I bought a lakefront property in North Tampa, Florida, on which we built a beautiful house. Because I'd grown up in New Jersey, but I'd spent two and a half decades freezing my butt off with San Francisco Bay Area summers. And I was really excited about the prospect of doing something crazy, like maybe wearing shorts or a bathing suit in the summertime. <laughs> So we thought we might actually be able to relocate to Florida, and uh, we closed in June. We went down and spent a lot of time in the summer trying to find jobs, but long story short, there just weren't jobs to be had. The housing market was booming at that time, as you all know, and we knew, sadly, that the right thing to do was to put the house on the market, uh, give up the dream, and go back to California. So we listed really high, because everybody was telling us how much the house was gonna be worth. We loaded our stuff in a minivan and we started our drive west. Three days later, Hurricane Katrina hit and the housing market along the entire Gulf Coast from Texas all the way over to Florida died. Well, we hung on believing it would come back and a lot of other people believed it would come back too, but it didn't. So we ended up owning a really beautiful house on the other side of the country. Because of the kind of work I do, I can work remotely. So I started using the Tampa house as a second home. And that's when I learned what it meant to live in Florida. Now, our community was called Cory Lake. It was gated, it was lush, it was full of tropical beauty. We had this 4,000 square foot house. And it was developed by a man named Gene Thomason. He bought a piece of swamp land and he developed this big, gorgeous community out of it, and he named it for his son, Corey, who by that time was a grown man. But Gene had a lot of emotional attachment to Corey Lake, and laws in Florida are a little bit squishy anyway. Gene didn't have a whole lot of regard for legal things. So he kind of set it up as his kingdom, and he was a despot, but as long as we subjects paid money and kept our mouths shut, we could live there. Now, Gene was not only the developer, he was the head of something called the Community Development District Board, CDD. In Florida, that's a municipal entity that's kind of like a town council in other places, and some communities have it, and it has elected seats. But not being real keen on that legal thing, Gene always sort of kept that quiet. And so the people that managed to be, have those elected seats were himself, his wife, his son, Corey, and two of his close friends. And they controlled the community budget, which was really substantial. So they could do things like award the maintenance contract for all those lush, beautiful tropical grounds to a maintenance company that was owned by Gene Thomason <laughs> and give that out at a highly inflated rate. He, we also had security guards in the gates, and they were friends of Gene's. So sleeping on the job, for instance, generally went unpublished. Well, there were a lot of abuses of community funds, and eventually the lawsuit started because there were some sharp people that had moved into the community, and a lot of lawyers. And they also discovered that those CDD seats were actually elected positions. And some people decided they were gonna run for some open seats that were coming up. So because I do PR and communications consulting, I lent my efforts on a volunteer basis to the campaign. They back actually managed to win the three seats, which was great for the community, but we knew it was going to take a long time to change the course of the ship. And at that point, the financial cost for Chris and I had just gotten too great. We couldn't justify an empty house on the other side of the country too much longer. So we knew we had to turn it into a rental because we still couldn't sell it. So the first group of tenants were great, the first couple. Their own house was being renovated. They took care of our house like it was their own. They, we, we exchanged Christmas cards. Uh, but 10 months later, their house was finished and they were gone. Now, in that 10-month period, there's a second governing body in Cory Lake. Besides the CDD, there is the Property Owners Association because Gene Thomason wouldn't have anything as pedestrian as a homeowners association. <laughs> so the POA decided they didn't like all these. There were a lot of empty houses sitting there. They didn't want a lot of renters coming into the community, so they started uh, imposing really strict rules. You had to pay them a $100 application fee to have your tenant considered. 
They could take up to two weeks to give you their answer and they could reject anyone they wanted. Well, in an area where there's a lot of really nice new empty houses, not too many people are gonna hang around and wait that long. But Cory Lake had some cachet for those outside of the gate. They didn't know how screwed up it was. And they wanted it. So finally we did manage to get tenants who passed muster with the POA. Um, they were a married couple, two doctors, and their three little kids. Doctors! How did we get so lucky to get doctors? These people are going to be amazing tenants. They turned out to be the tenants from hell. They could not or would not do anything for themselves. There were endless service requests coming through the property management company. The dishwasher, the refrigerator, the dryer, the backyard, the dishwasher again. And we were supposed to be paying for all of these service calls while well, these people were making $350,000 a year living in my beautiful house while I was back in California. We were working our butts off to pay outrageous rent on a little rental house, and I'm still freezing my butt off in the summertime. Was not happy. After all this time is going by, the wacko Florida energy was really coming to dominate my life. It was sucking my cash, it was raising my blood pressure, and it was slowly driving me insane. So by the summer of 2013, the housing market had come back enough the lease was coming due, and Chris and I knew it was time to just get rid of this albatross and sell that place. So I went down there on Labor Day weekend to get the house ready for sale. And I walk in, and the doctor tenants have trashed the place. Not only was it filthy, but shades were hanging off windows, there were holes in the wall, the carpets were nasty. I was in shock. And the husband doctor happened to be home when I got there, and he walked over and asked if I was the owner. Yeah. And he had the temerity to shake my hand and thank me and tell me how much they had enjoyed living there. <laughs> so words failed me, and I knew I could get in legal trouble if I said anything. So, uh huh. The realtor was freaking out. So, thousands of dollars later, which of course exceeded the amount of their security deposit. And after weeks of dealing with inane Florida contractors long distance, the house was finally ready to list. We got an offer we could accept, and it sold the day after Thanksgiving, November of 2013. We closed escrow long distance, and eight years of hell were finally over, or so I thought. <laughs> Unfortunately, in Hillsborough County, Florida, the um, property tax bill gets issued in November every year. And all of the expenses that we had paid for our house went through escrow and were paid by the mortgage company. They didn't know we were selling, so they went and paid the tax bill when it came out. So we told the settlement company this at the time of closing. And they said, oh, that's no big deal. That happens all the time with November closes. We'll just wait a few weeks until the paperwork catches up, and then we'll do the final disbursement. I'm like, well, OK. Until about a week later, the agent at the settlement company got tired of that kind of open paperwork thing on her desk was to make a little mess, and she went and double paid the taxes. $9,000 worth. Now, we were already into this for well over six-figure loss. I can't even describe to you how I felt when I learned about this double payment. What ensued was a fight with that agent, a fight with the county, and a fight with the mortgage company because no one would own it. Where was our $9,000? Through Christmas and into January, I pursued that money blinded by rage. They were not going to keep my nine grand. And it was only in February when I finally found the phone number for the legal department at the mortgage company. And by the way, don't ever deal with Green Tree Servicing if you can help it. <laughs> I left a voicemail and said, I'm going to sue you. Three days later, we had a check in hand. And it was finally done, but not. <laughs> because in the summer of 2014, we started getting violation notices from the Cory Lake POA for grievous offenses like leaving a trash can at the end of the driveway or parking a car on the street overnight in front of a house that we didn't own anymore because somehow they had missed the, all the notices that 
the house had been sold. And you'd think they'd kind of be checking anyway because it might kind of be their job as a homeowners association. <laughs> but it started occurring to me, could these idiots harm my credit score? <laughs> because the violation notices were getting progressively nastier. So in desperation, I looked up the CDD and I actually found some old friends from the election days, years gone by, when I'd helped get them elected and they remembered me and they intervened and actually we finally did get the problem resolved within a couple days and we have not heard one word from Corey Lake since. Now in January of this year, we bought another big beautiful house here in Alexandria. But we thoroughly checked out the very low-key HOA before we <laughs> signed a thing. The neighbors are really nice. Everybody seems to follow the law. It's a pretty happy community. And finally, finally, I am back home on the East Coast where the summer is hot and I am loving it. 